Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, this week we're going to continue our conversation with Mike Dyer of Klipsch. And in this episode, we're going to focus on what they consider to be the best two-way speaker ever made. And that is, of course, the Jubilee, which is their top-of-the-line model. So in this episode, I've used his introduction, which is what I used in the, the Scala video from a few days ago. And if you haven't seen that video, it'll be linked at the end of this episode. So while you're watching this, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss that next video, hit subscribe. So here we go. Let, I'll let Mike do his introduction, and then we'll jump into everything about the Jubilee. We've got Mike Dyer with us today, and Mike's been with Klipsch. I won't say how long. I'll let him tell that <laughs> side of the equation. But Mike, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, hey, guys and gals. Um, I'm Mike Dyer. I'm the, uh, the, the Klipsch Heritage Brand Ambassador. Um, which is a long title, but basically uh, my my role these days is uh, I'm semi-retired. Uh, I spent uh, a, close to 50 years selling Hi-Fi uh, for various manufacturers, uh, one of which has been a long run with uh, with Klipsch. Um, I started, uh, started working for Klipsch in 1984 and uh, was uh, still under the ownership of Paul Klipsch back in those days. And uh, so I worked directly, directly with uh, Mr. K and, uh, and then uh, bounced around for a few years, came back to Klipsch and uh, retired from uh, the sales department um, about five years or about three years ago. And uh, they asked me to stick around and uh, talk about the old days and, uh, and old technologies that still works today. And, and so that's why I'm here. Well, good. I was hoping that uh, if while you're here, um, I know the viewers would love to hear about some of the big guys you guys have and some of the legendary speakers like the Jubilee and the Clipshorn and the La Scala. Uh, could you, could you kind of walk us through a little bit of history and, and what's current with those? Sure. You know, we'll we'll talk a little bit about the Jubilee. Um, that was the last speaker that Paul worked on with Roy Delgado before he passed away. And uh, so, a, a couple things that that Mr. K wanted was he he wanted to um, make it the the Clipshorn Two. He, he wanted to to be the flagship and replace the Clipshorn Two. And uh, as they as they got uh, into the development and and uh, and Mr. K also wanted to make uh, the Jubilee a two-way system in uh, uh, in honor of the fact that you know the first generations of clips horns were all two-way systems because they didn't you know a there was no software that required anything much over 10,000 Hertz um, and uh, and B that you know there there was no drivers that were capable of of uh, efficiently operating in those frequencies. So the you know for probably the first five or seven years, all the clip horns were two way systems. So uh, as they got going on this, they 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 you know tooled up a a, a, a driver and a horn for a two way system and listened to it. And both Roy and Mr. K agreed that it was too much better than the clip horn to call it a clip horn too that it had to it had to you know get its own pedestal to stand on gotcha. and uh, that was uh that was around 2000 when when they took it to that point well at that <clears throat> at that point um uh, mr k passed away and it kind of got shelved for like 20 years um but in the meanwhile the base bin that they had developed for the Jubilee uh, was slightly modified and used in the commercial theater business very mm. successfully for 20 years. So the the oh. the the the, the, uh, the design is well proven and tweaked and uh, you know ready ready for prime time. So you just didn't uh, take the prototype off the shelf and throw it out there. You had you had no, 20 years. No, of, we, uh, uh, and actually the, the 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 horn that's uh, the the high frequency horn that's uh, that's on there is a uh, is a modified version of a commercial horn also, but it's been it's been tweaked for uh, um, wider uh, 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 dispersion and a more uh, a smoother. You know, you you want a theater horn to throw. You want a home horn to spread and and and, and create soundstage. So it's uh, uh, we released the the Jubilee about three years ago to uh, great acclaim, 
and uh, and it's been selling very very well. Uh, I, you know, I never realized how many forty thousand dollar loudspeaker pairs you could sell, <laughs> but uh, we're doing it. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's, I know that obviously it's a big number for most everyone, but uh, there are certainly a whole lot of other speakers that are a lot more expensive. Uh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. It, you know, it's you know. You know, the, the, you know, it's, it's competition is, is six figure speakers, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a super value. Yeah. Now the, did you believe it did I've, I recall many years ago uh, in talking in, you know, in the forums and, and things that was there a Jubilee for a while prior to the, well, uh, that's, know, that is what we call the underground Jube. Okay. And we had uh, a dealer um, who took it upon himself to buy the theater horns um, and uh, the, the bass bins from the from the theater line, and also a high frequency horn that matched it, um, and is the commercial version of of what we're using in the in the Heritage Jubilee. And then he he sourced a uh, an active network and uh, and. Guy, you know, guys are uh, using different uh, high frequency drivers on them. Um, but, uh, you know, so so those are referred to as as Jubilees. But these days we call them the underground Jubes. And, okay. uh, and there's okay. quite a number of those that got sold. Yeah, I've I mean, I've, I've read about them. I've not ever seen or heard one in person, but, uh, but yeah. I knew they were out. Yeah, there. The, they uh, you know, they they, they uh, they've got a, a base response of about. Uh, High, in the high 30s, about like a Klipsch horn, um, where the Heritage Jubilee is uh, flat to an honest 18 hertz. So no oh. need for a subwoofer with the with the Heritage Jube. Not at all. Because it's got a uh, um, it's got a, a unique uh, loading system for the bass horn, which isn't in the underground. And uh, uh, Roy was uh, granted a patent. Uh, for this design, and basically what he's done is in one in, in a in in if we go previous generations of La Scala's and Klipsch horns, the 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 back air chamber behind the woofer diaphragm, back where the motor sits, that's in an air suspension system. It's in a sealed cabinet. Well, what he did for the Jubilee was he figured out a way to put it in a uh, base reflex enclosure and then get the back wave energy in phase and time with the front wave energy what? and fire all of that into the throat of the horn. I want to ask, how did the Jubilee get its name? Well, um, <clears throat> the the plan when, when it was initially designed uh, was to release it on the... Uh, uh, 50th anniversary of the company, which would have been uh, 1996. Um, <clears throat> obviously, that didn't happen. Um, so we it, it was introduced in our 75th year. So it, it sat on the shelf for 25 years, and uh, and and just out of respect to Mr. K, uh, we kept the name Jubilee. Okay, so that was the name that he he came up with and said. Yeah, we, yeah, he wanted to release the, it uh, as uh, as a fiftieth anniversary uh, product. I got you as a successor to the clip horn, uh, yep. or actually in that case, well, by this time it would have been superseded, superseded, and been the uh, next yep. step up, top of the line. Yeah, I definitely got. To, I need to at least uh, see some jubilees. I've not ever even seen a pair uh, in person. So, if the if the the clip horns are imposing enough. Um, I would imagine these are, you know, a little bit more substantial. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, what the first time, the first time I saw them and listened to them, um, you know, somebody asked me, said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but Klipsch horns look and sound small compared to these. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, I can only imagine. Wow. Yeah, it takes uh, uh you need a I mean you need a, a substantial room for a set of clip horns. So you'll need a uh, I guess a little bit more substantial room for a set of those. Well, you know, Roy Roy has a saying. He says the smaller the room, the bigger the horn. 
because uh, basically what you want to do is minimize uh, sidewall reflections and the horn does that so the big you know the bigger the horn the lower it's going to go and you know i've 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 installed these into uh, some pretty tight spots um we had a we had a dealer show and we set the jubilees up in a room that was probably 14 by 18 i mean it was a, it was not a large room and uh, uh roy roy was there with me and uh, we looked at the room and it's like boy this is going to be tough but uh, they really sounded good um and uh, actually we you know they 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 were uh, we were getting enough resolution that we started uh, we started uh, swapping in and out uh, amplifiers and you know listening listening to the nuances of the amps and um now what was, kind of efficiency do you get uh do they have well since since they're since they're uh, uh by the since the jubilees are bi amplified you you really don't have a, a standard uh, sensitivity rating on it but the raw driver on the uh, on on the high frequency is around one one oh eight, I think one oh seven. It's it's like twice as powerful as a clipshorn. Wow, I mean, which the clipshorn is amazing. At I think one oh well, the minor I think one oh four, yep. and so that's yep. uh, incredible. So you can, I mean, what uh, one point five watts, two watts, and uh, it's a little. You need that much. <laughs> So, so you can definitely focus on quality wads. Yeah. Well, that's okay. that's the beauty is you can buy the amp that you like the sound of. I mean, if you like little SET flea amps, go for it. They're, you know, they'll scream. You know, they'll 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 sing out. Um, right. They'll you know, um, you know. But uh, conversely, if you if you you know if if you like the the bass control of a of a huge, uh, you know, uh, FET amp, uh, big, you know. Um, go for it you know because the speakers will take a lot more than your ears will right yeah yeah you you certainly won't stress your amp uh, ever and uh, you'll stress your ears uh, uh yep. before you stress your amp that's uh that's a given wow that's amazing